Hey guys, welcome to the new and improved Hip Hughes History. No more pop-ins, but I can't do the Amish rocking chair. I have to stand, and we're gonna do another video for my teacher peeps out there. And again, I'm watching Seinfeld. It was the exclamation uh, episode. And I just don't happen to like exclamation points. Well, you know, Jake, you should learn to use them. Like the way I'm talking right now, I would put exclamation points at the ends of all of these sentences. So I think it's really important, exclamation point, exclamation point, to talk about the art of teaching. So we're gonna talk about the three things at least I've learned from my own experience. I don't think there's really experts in anything. There's only experience to tap into that I've learned about the art of teaching. The three you know, most important things, if I could talk to a new teacher, an old teacher, if I could talk to myself, that I tell myself about the art of teaching, exclamation point. So why don't we go giddy up for learning and go do that right away and you guys win. No more pop-ups and downs, but I get to walk off to the sunset I get to sneak up on you too. Uh, the first thing that I always talk about, and it's kind of my mantra, it's on the website, I'm sure that you know I'm gonna say it, it's about attention. You know, I always tell the kids, I tell everybody I know where attention goes, energy flows. And here's the analogy that I, I, I share with kids, I share with my colleagues um, and my students, um, that you, know, you can be a really great content teacher, and you could be a really great lecturer, you could really be great at your job, but if we use the analogy that teaching like flying a kite, you're still gonna need wind. And the wind in this instance, in this example, exclamation point, is gonna be attention. If students don't give you their authentic attention, then pretty much, you know, everything you're doing is for naught. I, I kind of see attention in three stages. Number one, can you capture attention? The beginning of your class is so important to do that. And authentically, I mean, they have to decide they're gonna pay attention. Just looking at you isn't enough, that's for sure. Then once you get it, what are you gonna do with it? Can you maintain it? There's gonna be explicit instruction. You're gonna talk to the kids. And are they really listening? Because it might be the worst way of learning listening, but you're still gonna have to talk to them. So you're gonna have to get their attention for you know, going over projects or going over a quick review or lecture or whatever it's gonna be. And then here's the key. You know, when you let go, can you facilitate that attention into something that is meaningful? It's all about attention. So if you're thinking about content and you're thinking about methodology and you're not thinking about um, attention, that you might be going off track. So number one, I'm trying to keep it short, exclamation point, attention. Where attention goes, energy flows. To walk away, every time, every time. Number two, I have a video called Being a Fool, Not a Teacher. Um, I really believe in this idea, but here, you know, here's the key, right? Where does learning happen? It happens in the brain. So once you realize that, once you accept that exclamation point, that you know, everything that you're doing kind of revolves around that idea that you're really trying to facilitate a learning experience, focusing on learning, that's the key, in order to get them uh, not only engaged, not only to cross the finish line, not only to get your objectives, but to learn how to learn. I think that's key. We're all teachers of different content areas, but we're also teaching kids how to think, how to pay attention like I talked about before, and hopefully facilitating a powerful learning experience. And realizing, you know, that kids don't all learn the same way. I think the pitfall might be that teachers, you know, maybe learn a certain way and they think that's the, that's the way of learning. And actually, I think schools are quite inept at facilitating learning experiences. And, and knowing that, it's kind of like fakery or magic, you know, trying to create the constraints of an authentic experience for kids, whether they're, you know, traditional kids that learn from reading and writing and those types of literacies, or if you have other modes, multimodal literacies, if you have kids that are visual or audio or mechanical, they have to move around or they have to collaborate. There's all kinds of different kinds of learners. So that's why I think anybody who think is nailed down teaching and learning is probably just nailed a little tiny bit. There's a lot to go, exclamation point. But really the key, right, is that learning happens in the brain, that, you know, they're not learning in the space between your mouth and their ear. That's for sure, exclamation point. So think about how you can facilitate a learning experience um, and using those rules of engagement of attention. All right, I got one more for you. Right over here, Start grabbing, bam! Me high, cheeksy, me high. Yeah, that's it. Me high, cheeks at me high. 
I, I can't just say the name. I have to phonetically do it. I'll put it on the wall right there. But this is a psychologist who I remember reading a book years ago called Flow. And uh, this is the, 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 the third key, is that you have to try your best to get kids into flow. And in his book about flow, he talks about you know, the optimal human experience. And this is where we are best adept at learning. People generally in flow when they're doing what they love, right? So gymnastics or playing the flute characteristically flow experiences when you know you're being challenged but you uh, your attention being absorbed by the activity you lose track of time uh, you're almost you know kind of separated from reality and a lot of people when they're in flow or when their attention is really focused you know they won't hear other things around them and sometimes people get mad at them maybe me all the time because I do it all the time exclamation point in the book he talks about how the nervous system can only take about 110 bits of information per second and when someone's talking at you that's six 60 seconds. That's why you can't hear two people talk because it's too much information. So really trying to funnel you know, how kids are going to use their attention to take that 110 bits and be authentically engaged um, and realizing that experience can be recreated. Kids can do this. They can be in flow in classes. If you really remember the two key elements of flow, there has to be buy-in. The kids have to choose to want to do the activity. That's why it's important to find activities that have multiple roles so different kinds of learners and different kinds of kids can find their different way to be part of the whole team. I loved video production because kids that were writers got to write, kids that liked to research could research, they all did a little bit, but you know, the editors could edit and the kids could act and they could be the camera guy and everybody found a way, um, it's called a semiotic domain, to feel as though they were part of this video making experience. So how can you do that in your classroom to get kids in flow where when the bell rings they don't even realize it because, you know, they weren't thinking about the time, exclamation point. The other part, besides the buy-in, is that they're doing it for purpose. There has to be a product. There has to be an end result that the kids invested in. That's why it's important to find a way to allow to put themselves into it a little bit. You know, whether that's their voice or their vision or their idea, that they're participating, that it counts. Then you'll get the buy-in. Then you'll get the engagement. Then you'll get the flow. Then you'll get the attention. And then maybe you'll have some learning exclamation point. All right, so those are the three elements that I think are most key to teaching. There's lots else that we could talk about, but I'm trying to keep it under like a reasonable amount of time. So remember where attention goes, energy flows. Remember to try to engage them in flow. And remember where learning happens. It's not gonna happen in the space inside the classroom. Learning happens not everywhere. It happens one place. It happens in the human brain. All right, if you haven't checked it out, we have the video arsenal. Um, the link is down below. There's about 550 videos, tons of teacher advice videos, history videos, public videos, religion, world, all kinds of videos. All right, we'll see you guys next time that you press my buttons. I want to duck down so bad. A little bit sad that I can't do the duck down anymore. All right, guys, see you on the internet.